Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Let's see, we have a couple more people signing in, so I'll give them a chance to fully log in, um, and then we'll begin this in a moment or so. Okay, well, we have a lot of material to cover in the hour, so I'd like to begin. This is the Report Designer Basic Training Webinar. Today is Wednesday, November 13th, 2019. My name is Eric Johnson, and I will be your Winwood Training Facilitator today. I'm a technical support engineer here at Winwood Studios, and I've been here a little over two years now. Uh, welcome, everyone. You may have noticed that when you logged into the GoToMeeting webinar, you have a toolbar. The arrow that you see on your screen is pointing to the raise your hand icon. So if any time during the webinar you have a question or are experiencing technical difficulties, please feel free to click that button to ask your question or notify me of anything that's wrong. Uh, the prompts I have for questions in chat are on my other screen, so I may not see your comment immediately. Usually I wait until the Q&A session at the end to answer questions, but I'll check occasionally in case something has been posted. Again, this is a basic introduction to Report Designer. So I'm assuming that you haven't used Report Designer. Maybe you've installed it, but you probably haven't built any templates yet. So you don't know too much about the interface or how to add tags to your document. So today, we'll go over the very basics, the fundamental things to do with Report Designer. Next week, there's an intermediate training webinar scheduled where we'll cover more advanced features. Okay, to give you an idea of the machine I'm working on, my computer is running Windows 10 operating system, which is 64-bit, and I'm using Office 2016, also 64-bit. Uh, Office 2016 is also the same as Office 365. Um, and my Office version is 64-bit. It's okay to use 32 or 64-bit, we recommend using the 64-bit as this allows you to utilize all the memory on your machine when building a template and gathering data from your data source because sometimes you're pulling a lot of data and that requires a lot of memory. I think 32-bit only allows you two gigs of memory uh, while the 64-bit you can utilize all you have in your hardware. And the version of Report Designer that I'm using is 16.6.0.104. And you can always find the latest version um, on our downloads webpage. Okay. I want to give you a high level overview of what we'll be discussing today. We'll take a look at what's within the Winward and Winward Tools tabs. We'll create a simple template using the for each and out tags to create a couple of lists. And these, and these two tags, the out and for each tag, are the most popular tags that you'll use um, when designing templates. We'll go over the input parameter or what we consider variables, which are used to filter before you generate the output. We'll go over a couple of data source wizards, more specifically the SQL and XML wizards. We'll cover how to generate a report, and lastly, how to get some help. All right, well, we're first gonna take a look at what's in the Winward Tools tab. 
Uh, you're not going to access this tab that often. It just kind of gets your environment set up. We'll go over the find and replace tool. We'll discuss the about button. We'll look at the license button. So if you're using a temporary key and you want to update it to your permanent key, I'll show you where to do this. And I'll show you where to get samples and other tutorials after this webinar. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at Report Designer. I'm gonna open up uh, Word. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using two screens and it just opened in my other screen. So I'm gonna bring this over, let's expand it. And I'm gonna open up a blank Word document. Let's go ahead and increase this a little. All right, so when you install Report Designer, there will be two tabs added to the Word ribbon, this WinWord tab and this WinWord Tools tab. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the things that are within this WinWord Tools tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it now. And, and let's go over here on the left. Um, I like to point out some things First thing I want to point out is in this tool section, and uh, that's this generate code button. And this button is handy for developer types. And this shows you how to generate the code for the Winwood engine for this template that we're working on. So if you're using the .NET, the Java, or the RESTful engine, this button shows you the code and how to reference the template data source and in, in input variables and how to generate the output. Okay, next thing over is the, um, from this generate code button, the last thing I wanna talk about is this find and replace tool. And this is an easy way to update all the tags in your template. So likely your template um, will be several pages long and you can use this tool to update all the tags at once instead of going in and manually updating each tag one at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And while that's open, I see a question from Grant. Uh, Grant, I will uh, help you with that license key after this uh, webinar. All right, and so this is our find and replace tool. And um, like I said, it's a, it's a handy way to update all your tags at once. Say you created a, a template and when you create a template, you attach a data source to it. Um, and that data source, you give a nickname. Um, and when you first set up the template, you gave it a very generic name, uh, which doesn't mean anything. And you wanna go back in and change those nicknames. So you could go into each tag one by one and change the, the, the nickname of the data source. Or you could come in here, enter in what you're trying to find, the nickname name, the name that you wanna replace it with. And then you could replace all, you could replace one at a time, just like your regular find and replace tool. And also we give you ways to only update the nickname or the value in specific tags. Say you only want to update it in the if, else tags and also the else tag. You, you have that ability in here. You can also search on different properties. Uh, here is the nickname. So uh, we give you a, a good way to update the document um, to re update all the tags by using this find and replace tool. It's pretty handy. Okay. Over in the right, in this option section, uh, next thing we like to go over is the About button. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And this About button gives you information on the version that you're using. Here you can see I'm using version 16.6.0.104. .6 
could also tell that your word is a 64 bit. You can see that right here. Um, it shows you the version that your license key that you're using is valid through. So here in the license key I'm using is valid through any 16 release. And it also shows you uh, how many systems that you can run uh, that can be used simultaneously with this key. Here, um, mine's a 50 system key, it's a super key. Um, yours may not be as large, but nonetheless, it does tell you how many systems you can use this license key on at one time. It also gives you an expiration date if your key has one. And over here on the right, uh, this would be a list of all the people who are using this specific key at the moment you click the about button. So here it gives you a nice list. So if you are, if you do come into a point where you're using more um, designers than you're licensed for, you may want to come in and check this list and then see if there's more, you know, who who is using an extra designer and it could help you understand why you're over the limit. Okay. Also in this options section is the license button. And this is where um, you will enter your license. Um, if you have a temporary license, you'll enter it in here. If you have a version 15 license and you want to upgrade to version 16, well, you go to the Winwood store, you get your version 16 license, and then you'll come and paste it in here. All right, today, watching this webinar, I say it's your best first step to learning the report designer. Uh, next step I would suggest is going to our training guide, and you can access that through this help drop down button. So I'm gonna click on that. And then here, there is a start here option. So when you click on that, it opens up a, um, a browser. And here you can choose the type of uh, template that you want um, to go through the training with. Um, and we'll just choose Word. Once you choose the type of document, you will then can choose the data source, let's say XML. And then it'll just give you a nice training guide that'll walk you through installing, connecting to data, designing and inserting data and output. So a good little tutorial with a lot of screenshots to really show you what we're um, what we're showing you through these training guides. Okay, next thing I'd recommend when uh, learning the designer is looking at some of the samples that we provide. Uh, samples can be also found when you click the drop down, and then samples right here. So I just click that samples button. And it opens up our getting started guide. Here you can see uh, we have a few different uh, sample templates for a few different industries, energies, financials, insurance. But then down here under the additional section, uh, we have a bunch of tag tutorials. We have the tag tutorials for SQL, XML, and JSON. Um, we've just started to build up our JSON um, tag tutorials, so we're not fully there yet, um, but SQL and XML can pretty much show you how to use these tags. So we're gonna, the first example we're gonna go through is just to then look at the SQL. So I have that selected. And then over here on the right are different options, different uh, tag tutorials you can look at. And for each tag that you can utilize in your template, we have a, a tutorial for you. Uh, so this is the if tag. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And here is a tutorial giving you step-by-step -step procedures on how to use the if tag. There's further instructions on how to use the else tag. Also, and a really good thing about these uh, tutorials is that they're connected, this one specifically is connected to our SQL, our Northwind SQL server database which is a public database. So you can actually generate output from these samples. So as you 
go along and we review them, you can generate the output to see how these tags can be used. Another great reference for understanding how to use the designer and specifically the tags within it. Okay, I'm going to minimize that. All right, so we just talked about the Winwood Tools tab. Next thing we're going to look at is the Winward tab. Okay, and now there's a few tools within this tab that we're going to be going over once we open up Word again. Um, I'll show you how to connect to your data source. Um, I'll show, we'll be showing you how to create a template. Um, that will be a very easy template. Um, and that template will use some for each and out tags. Um, I'll show you how to select the tag, how to pull your data in using the data bin. I'll show you how to insert using the wizards for SQL and XPath. I'll show you how to create an input parameter and also how to generate output. So the Winward tab is a tab you will use mostly. Okay, now for an overview of what a for each tag is. Well, for each tag does three things. First, it fetches a set of data or the specific data that you want to utilize from your data source. Next thing it does is it repeats that data through an iterative loop. For example, if you're trying to create a list. And the third thing that it does is it repeats the contents between the beginning and ending for each tag. Now the end for each tag just tells report designer when to stop repeating contents with each, with each iteration of the loop. And this for each tag is a tag that you will use regularly. Now, the most common tag, though, is the out tag. And the out tag is basically short for output. So when you're trying to display data from within your template, from your data source, so when you're ready to display a number, an image, or text, this is when you'll use the out tag. And out tags are simply just placeholders for your data. So the for each tag doesn't actually display the data it gathers the data that you want to use. It then loops through that data and repeats the contents between the beginning and ending tags. The, this out tag actually displays the data that you want your users to see. Okay, let's now go back to Word and start creating a template. So I'm going to open up a, a blank Word document. There we go. Expand it for you. All right. So the first thing that you'll want to do when creating a template is to connect to your data. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this WinWord tab. And over here on the left is our data sources button. And this is where you, this button you use to connect your template with your data. So if you use an XML, SQL, JSON, old data, or any other type of data source, this is where you'll set up the connection. So I'm going to go ahead and click on data sources because it's the first thing you want to do when creating a template. And this opens up the connection editor. And here in the connection screen, you'll see uh, that our active um, section is empty right now because we haven't connected anything to a data source yet. Um, but let's talk about new first. Uh, well, before we do that, since I mentioned the active and then here, um, is just recent inactive. So if, if you have connected to a data source, we do keep a list of the ones that you've connected to recently. So you won't have to always go in and create a new 
connection here. If you've used it before, it could end up in the recent inactive and you could easily just connect to one this way. But we're gonna go ahead and create a new data source today. So I'm gonna click this new button and there's a bunch of different connections you can set up. You can set up, uh, see, we have, uh, you can set up a connection to our Salesforce app. Um, here under the web and file, you have ability to set up a JSON and old data an XML XPath1 and XPath2 connection, and then also a bunch of different SQL connections. Um, now, you may need some other connection, like maybe the MySQL connection. And so if you do, um, you can always visit our Ohana database, and there um, you'll have instructions on how to get the drivers and how to set up uh, for different um, SQL connections or other connections there are. But today, uh, we're gonna start off by connecting to our Northwind SQL Server database. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this option right here, SQL Server Database. Now over here in the, on the right in this de detail section is where you'll enter in all the credentials for the data source. First thing that you'll do or you'll want to do is provide this connection with a nickname. And this is uh, what we mentioned earlier when we were looking at the find and replace tool. And since we're connecting to our Northwind SQL uh, database, let's go ahead and give this a nickname that makes sense so we know what this connection is for. So let's go ahead and call this the uh, Northwind SQL connection. And when you uh, are entering in nicknames, there can be no spaces. So it has to be all one string with no spaces. Okay, next thing that you want to do after you enter in the nickname is you want to indicate the server you want to connect to. So we're going to go ahead and connect to the MSSQ l.winword.net server. And this is a public server. Um, to access it, we'll then come over here and enter in our username and password. And uh, for this server, the username is demo, D-E-M-O, and the password is also demo, D-E-M-O. Okay, now that I have the server and the credentials entered, I can come over here and Based on this information that we've already entered, the system knows what databases you have access to on this server. So here's a list of all the databases I can access. Uh, for our example, I mentioned we're gonna to connect to the Northwind. I'm gonna go on and select that. And there's a few other things that I wanna point out on this. Um, detail section uh, here, um, there is uh, the display tables and you have a different few different options. Hovering over any of these um, will give you an explanation of what these different display tables will do. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and keep it at user. That's the one I always use. Um, over on the right, yeah, there's also this read in metadata checkbox, which is checked by default. It's only a few times that you don't want to pull in all your metadata from the database schema, but this is a great option to normally keep checked. Um, so here, we've just entered in all this credential information manually, um, but there is another way to set up connection, and that is to use this connection string checkbox right here. So if your DBA has provided you with a connection string to your data source, instead of going through all these manual fields, you can copy and paste it right here by just selecting this checkbox. We're not, we're gonna stick with the manual process, so I'm gonna uncheck that. And the last thing in this screen is the root directory field. And this is for using relative paths within your tag. So if you're referencing sub-templates or images that are on a shared network, you can provide the root directory for the designer to use to locate those sub-templates or images. 
All right, now that all of the information has been entered to connect to our data source, let's go ahead and test the connection. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna click on this test button. And here you can see that my data test succeeded. So that means that I know I can connect to this database. If, if I had some issues, you would see some message in red. But now that I know I can connect, I'm gonna go ahead and click the add button. And when I do that, now you'll see that I have an active connection, and that is this Northwind SQL connection right here that we've set up. All right, I will have to, I'm uh, sorry, um, I got another message. I will have to look at that uh, message um, after this webinar. Uh, not open it. Yeah, let me look at that afterwards. I'll follow up with you and I'll help you with that connection issue that you're experiencing. All right, so now that I am connected to this Northwind uh, SQL database, I'm gonna go ahead and close this connection editor. All right, now, after connecting to a data source, the designer automatically will show you the database schema over here on the right. And these are all the tables and all the views that I have access to. And this is based on the username and password that I entered in the uh, connection editor screen. If you have stored procedures, um, that you have access to, you won't see that here in the data bin. Uh, you'll see that in the data tree, which um, I will show you in a little bit. One other thing that I would like to point out on this data bin is something that we have recently introduced in version 16, and that's a way to search through the data bin, because your, your data structure may be very large, have a lot of, um, just a lot of nodes and tables, um, and you may ha have a difficult time opening them all up. Um, SQL is a little easier, but uh, with things like XML and JSON, it, the, the no list may be a little long. So we have an easy way that if you do wanna search for something, you can do that here. Uh, so if I type in category, I choose the down arrow. The first instance of category, anything that has it in the word will come up. If it's not it, I can keep on going down and it'll open up all the tables and views to show you that one that you're looking for. And you can also, when you're looking for it, you can match it by the case, or you could also add in a regular expression for your search and to make it a, so in case you don't know exactly what you're looking for, but you have an idea, um, you can use a regular expression. Okay, so to get started, uh, let's go ahead and create a basic table. I'm gonna come over here to the Insert tab. I'm gonna click on this Tables button, and let's go ahead and create a table that's uh, three columns by two rows. All right, now that the table's there, I need to use the designer to start tagging up my document. Okay, for this example, we're just gonna look at this categories table. So I'm just gonna minimize this. So we're gonna use this categories table for this first example. And in this, you have category ID, category name, uh, description, and also a picture. So since we have three um, columns, let's go ahead and display in our table the category name. Let's display the description. And lastly, the picture. All right, 
Now that we have our header row set up, we need to supply this table with data from the actual categories table. So first thing to do is I'm going to put my cursor right here under in the category name column, second row, right there. Now with that set, I'm going to click on the Windward tools, and we're going to add a tag to this template. So I'm going to go over here to the Tags button, and I'll click it. And what opens is a little window with all the tags that you can choose. And if you hover over any tag, it'll give you a short description of what that the use of that tag is. So first thing we're going to do in, in our table is we're going to add a for each tag. This will be the thing that gets our data for us. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now I want to select this for each tag that we just entered, and I want to point out a few things. So over here, still in the WinWord tab, is this for each tag properties. And so this is an easy way to tell what tag you selected. I've entered one tag, a for each tag, and here you can see that I've selected it, and it is a for each tag. So an easy way to tell the type of tag that you selected. Now above it, there's a couple of fields. There's this variable field and this nickname field. By default, the designer provides you with a variable name for the tag. Here they called it bar name one. And this variable is the name that the designer uses to reference this specific for each tag. So let's go ahead and change it to be a little more descriptive. So instead of bar name one, let's call this bar categories so we know it's a variable category press enter and you'll get a pop-up message do you want to update all the tags our reference variable one we don't have any things that reference it so i'm just going to say no and another thing up here is this nickname field and this can uh, make it easier for you to read the table or anyone else uh, who comes into this template later and needs to try to figure out how to add things to it so you can go ahead and give a, a nickname to this for each tag. So since we're dealing with categories, let's give this a nickname of categories. Okay, press enter. And when I do, you'll now see that our for each tag changed its name uh, to categories. All right. Now let's go ahead and select the data to use with this for each tag. And to do this, we'll use the shortcut up here in the tag properties, and that is our data tree button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And this opens up our data tree. And here, similar to the data bin, you have all the tables and views you have access to, but this is where you can also see the stored procedures that you have access to. All right, because we're discussing the categories tables in this example, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and select the whole categories table. If you, if it was, if you weren't displaying as much information, you could just choose specific columns, but since we wanna bring back um, a lot more information, almost all the information to display, I'm gonna go ahead and choose categories. So to make sure that we are bringing back all the category information, with this category selected, I'm gonna go ahead and click Preview. All right, and so you can tell here that we're bringing back the category ID, the category name, uh, the description, and the picture all the columns uh, from the categories table. And uh, looks like we have eight records here that we're bringing back as well. And just to let you know that when I'm working on templates, I use this preview button quite often. This helps to make sure that I'm when I'm building a template that I'm actually selecting the correct data that I wanna use. And as you can see here, we are. 
Okay, so the for each tag is getting the data that we want to utilize. Now to display the data, we'll need to use some out tags. So I'm going to place my cursor right here um, on the right side of categories, this categories for each tag. And I'll go back up here and click on the tags, and we're going to add an out tag. Now, as you just saw, wherever your cursor is blinking or it's lying is where the tag is inserted. So we've just added an out tag to this category table. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go up here to the data tree, and I'm going to click on that button. All right. So now our data tree looks a little different now. Um, by default, the designer knows that we're referencing a for each tag. So you can see that we have our VAR categories name right here. And if I expand it, you'll see all the data with, from within that categories um, for each tag. Since we're going to be displaying the category name, I'm going to select that. And one more thing, let me uh, open that back up. I just want to point out why I did that. So, so if you didn't use the variables from the for each loop to populate this out tag, but if you came down here and chose it from the from the actual table itself and not the for each tag, then what would happen is each time that this for each tag loops or iterates, instead of pulling the next record, it'll keep on pulling the first record from the categories table. So in order to get all the records from that table, we'll utilize the for each tag variable to pull in the specific value we're looking for. And here it was the category name. Okay. Well, we got an alt tag for the category name. Let's add an alt tag for the description. I'll place my cursor in this column, click tags, and I'll choose alt tag. Now, just like what we did on the category name, I'll select it so we can relate it to data. And I will come up here, click the data tree button, expand the VAR categories, and now I'm going to select the description to match the column. Last column, we have a picture. Let's go ahead and put our cursor there. Go back to tags, choose an out tag, select that tag. I'm going to go up to the data tree button, expand the VAR categories, and we want to pull in the picture data that the for each tag is retrieving. All right, almost done. Last thing we need to do is add our end for each tag. And again, the end for each tag will tell the designer when to stop looping through the content between this beginning and the ending tag and displaying all the information. Okay, so whenever you add a, ta a table, you'll want to put the end for each tag outside of the table. And it's logical to think that you want to put it right after this last tag in the table, but in actuality, so you don't create a list all in one line, you'll want to put the end for each tag outside the table. So I'm going to click outside the table, I'm going to go up to tags, and I'm going to add the end for each right there. And so again, here's our for each tag. It'll loop through, displaying the category name, description, and picture for each record. It'll come to the for end for each and go back to the for each and do it again. So now another cool thing um, about WinWord is that we support about 90% of Word functionality. We don't support Word art, so we don't suggest using it in your templates. Um, you could use our input tag to bring in your images, images and logos. Um, we would suggest that. But since we're using Word, we can style this table any way we want. So I'm going to go ahead and select the table. And I'll go up here in, in our table tools and click on this design tab. All right. 
So let's say we in our table we want a header row, we want banded rows. We don't need a first column, so I'm going to uncheck that. Like, let's go over here and even give this table a style. So let's go ahead and choose a green style. All right, boom. That's how easy you can style your tables. All right, pretty simple, huh? Um, just got one more question about the end for each tag. Um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll answer that question in a Q&A so everyone can uh, benefit from that one. All right. All right, now that we have our table set up, we have our tags in it, we have it looking the way we want, well, let's go ahead and output this to see how it looks. So I'm gonna go to the Windward tab, and I could click on this button, but uh, we also have a drop down. And when I click on that, you can uh, output to a bunch of different uh, styles. You can output a docx, you can output HTML, output to PDF, you can send the output to a printer or even create an RTF. The PPTX PowerPoint and XLSX Excel are grayed out because you can't generate output that crosses platforms. If you wanted to generate um, Excel, XLSX output, you would actually have to use Excel um, in order to generate the output. But let's go ahead and just generate some docx output. Um, it's going to say, do you want to save the report? You need to save it before generating. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Let's uh, give it a place to go. Let's put it on the desktop. I'll just keep the name. And it's creating the report now. And here we go. I'm going to split the screen. All right, and let's close this data bin. We don't need it anymore right now. So over here on the left is our template, and over here on the right is our output. And you may notice that the picture is not showing an image. It's just showing raw data. I'll show you how to correct this in a second. I just want to show you that here. We have our eight records, here's our category name, here's all the descriptions of those names, and um, we'll get this picture corrected now. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Reopen that. All right, so let's go ahead and correct this uh, picture out tag to display the picture and not just the raw data that's in the database. So with this alt tag selected, and again, I can tell it's an alt tag because it says alt tag properties here. Um, I can go ahead and give this alt tag a type. So I'll click that drop down, and here there's a bunch of different types that we can associate this alt tag to. Uh, face, face 64 template, bitmap, we can say it's a date, a hex template, we can define it as a number, a PDF, a template, or a text file. Um, but since we want to display an image, we'll go ahead and choose bitmap. All right, and now as you can see, um, the alt tag has now changed to an icon, and this just gives you a preview of the size of the image that's going to be displayed. Now I can change the size by clicking on that change drop down. I can give it a make it the size of the bitmap. Make it specified, specify the height, the width of the container. I'm just going to go ahead and choose specified width. All right, and now before we generate output again, let's go ahead and preview this picture tag just to make sure that it is pulling in, uh, that we are going to display a picture now. So I'm going to click picture, and now, yep, here we go we are going to display a picture, just what we want. Let's close this, let's go ahead and output this again. Say yes to save.
And let's split the screen. And over here on the right is our output. And here now you can see we have a picture. All right, pretty easy, huh? That's our first table, our first template we made. Uh, added some data, made a table, styled it all using Word. Uh, pretty simple. All right, next thing that I like to point out is that when you connect to a data source, you don't need to connect to just one. You can connect to multiple data sources at once, as well as different types. For example, you can connect to an XML and an SQL data source. Um, you may not commonly connect to two different types of data sources, but I just wanted to let you know that option is available. So let's go ahead and add some text to this template. Okay. Uh, Table. All right, that'll just help us separate the first table we created from this next one. All right, so as I mentioned here, let's go ahead and connect to an XML data source. So still within the WinWord tab, I'm going to go to data sources. And now, you I don't know if you've noticed before, but when we first opened up the template, there was just a yellow triangle here. Uh, but now there's a green circle, and that green circle lets us know that we are connected to a data source. But we want to connect to another one, so I'm going to go ahead and click that button. When it opens here, you can see we're still actively connected to the Northwind SQL. But this time we want to connect to XML, so I'm going to click New. And we have two different options, XPath 1 and XPath 2.0. XPath 2.0 just gives you the latest and greatest functions of XPath compared to XPath 1. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose the latest. Um, similar to the SQL connection, let's go ahead and give this a nickname. So we'll call this one, we're going to connect to the Northwind XML data source. So we'll call this Northwind XML. And again, no spaces in the nickname. Now you can either type in the URL for that data source right here, or if it's on your system, you can browse to the file by clicking that icon. And when you install the designer in the documents folder, you'll get this auto tag folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And now in this folder is your data and your templates, and there's also some backups. Um, so once you uh, upgrade, you'll have some backups. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select templates right now just to show you what's in this. I'm going to come down here and switch this from XML files to all files. And so we have tons of Word samples when you install the designer that get added to your system. There's a little over 200 samples that get installed, uh, which we're cleaning up all the time. And if you look up here, we also have, uh, these are all our Word samples. But we also have, also have Excel templates, uh, Podified or Pod templates, PowerPoint, and uh, your tag templates. All right, let's go back to switching this as XML because I just wanted to point out the templates and where they were located. Let's go back. Uh, a folder to the auto tag folder and this time let's go ahead and click on the data folder and so here are all our xml xml files all our xml data sources um, i mentioned we're going to connect to the north wind so i'm going to select that click open and now that's now this indicates where that data source is located if needed i could add a protocol um, to this connection. Um, I could add a schema name if, if I had one. I don't. All I needed was to just find the data space in this example. So with that select, with that set, I'm going to go ahead and test it. And here, just like we heard, saw previously, our data source test succeeded. 
this lets me know I'm able to connect, so I'm going to now click Add. Now it'll switch us to the Connection uh, tab, and here uh, you can now see we have our Northwind XML data source. Uh, we had our Northwind SQL earlier, and now we added the second one, Northwind XML. So now, um, now that we're all set up, um, let it go ahead and close this connection editor. And now you'll notice that our data bin is a little different. I still have all the tables and views from our Northwind SQL data source, um, but now we also have our Northwind XML uh, connection. And this one's just a little different because it's XML, but you can still see that you have your parent and your child nodes. And you can see those just by its standing. So there's another option um, that I like to point out that makes things easier for you. So let's say that Sorry, let's say that you are going to need to create a table uh, for your employees. So instead of going over here and creating the table and adding all the uh, tags one by one, a uh, nice option that we give you is you can select on that employee's, tape, uh, employee's uh, node and drag it over here. And now when I release my button, we have an option to create a new table. And here it, it's default set is to add all the columns. But if you didn't need all the columns, you could go ahead and deselect some, deselect them. And so for this example, let's go ahead and just add a couple columns from this employee's uh, table. So let's go ahead and add the last name. Let's add the first name, but we want the first name to come before the last name. So I can come over here and I can change the order uh, by clicking that bu this button. There we go. So now our first name comes before our last name. Let's also display the higher date in this table, and we'll also want the country. So with the, the columns that we want, the order that we want, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And here, the designer created the table for me, all with our for each tag, our out tags for all the columns and our end for each tag, which it does put outside the table. Let's go ahead and add some spaces up here in our header row. But yeah, that's a quick and easy way to create a table. All right, now that we've cleaned up our header table, our header row, let's just go ahead and make sure that we're pulling in the data that we are expecting to pull in. So I'm going to select this employees for each tag, and let's preview it. All right, um, this preview looks a lot different from the SQL preview we saw earlier, and that's just because we're dealing with X XML nodes as opposed to table columns that are formatted in a specific way. But here you can still see for this for each tag, we're pulling in one record for uh, Nancy, if I minimize this, here you'll see another record for Andrew, a third for Janet, and so forth. So we are pulling in all the records that we're looking for. Let's go ahead and preview the first name just to make sure it's also bringing back the information. And here you can see we're pulling the first name, Nancy, and all the people. Exactly what we wanted, perfect. And now, just like our other table, let's go ahead and give this a, some style. So select it, go to Table Tools, let's choose Design. Uh, we want a header row this time. We still, we don't need standard columns, standard rows are fine. Uh, this table, we just want to have a slightly different look. So let's make it blue and something like that. Let's say that was our... Uh, design requirement that was needed. Um, so here, let's go ahead and output this just to make sure that this table is working fine. So I'm going to go to the WinWord tab, click, I'm going to do the drop down again, and this time let's choose PDF. 
I'm going to say yes. Nope, not time out. The output came out on my other window. So let's go ahead and drive this over. Let's split the screen. And here we still have at the top and I'll put our first SQL table for the category name, still with the picture. And now down here underneath it is our XML table that we created just by dragging and dropping in here. Um, we got the first name, the last name, the hire date, and the country. Now you may see the hire date um, and notice that it's not as user-friendly as a date would normally be. And we can go ahead and um, style that as well, format it to be more user-friendly. I'm going to close this output. I'm going to select this higher date. I'll go up here to the Alt-Tag properties, and I'm going to click on the Format Data button. And now, similar to Excel, uh, we can format this date variable uh, very different ways. Um, I want to use this long format, March 14th, 2001. So with the specific format that you want, I'm going to go ahead and click Apply, I'm going to click Close. Now let's go ahead and preview this to make sure that it's the format that we were wanting. And here you can see that the higher dates are now all in a, a format that we that we want more. Uh, it's easier to read. All right, let's just go ahead and output this just to make sure that the higher date looks correct. Put the screen. All right, and now you can notice, well, we didn't format the table the best. We could have uh, did a little expanding on the column, but here you can now see the higher date is uh, month, day, yeah, just what we wanted. Oh, I just noticed the time. I'm running a little late today. Sorry about that. Uh, there is two more quick things I want to show you, and uh, that is on how to filter. Uh, Output, so I hope you stay around. Uh, this won't go. This won't take too long, um, and I think it's a good thing to learn. All right. So what I've been showing you is great if you just want an entire list. But what? I mean, but what happens if you want to provide filtering before you generate output? Well, one way you can do this is through input parameters. So still within the Word tab, when Word tab, sorry. I'm going to go over here and click Input Parameters. And here I can define and add uh, input parameters. So I'm going to click Add. And let's go ahead and give this input parameter a name. Uh, we'll be attaching this to the Categories table. So let's go ahead and call this Input uh, Category. Okay, press enter. Now we can uh, keep this as default. Um, it's default by, it's uh, required by default, um, but you can uncheck it if you want. Uh, we can give a default value to this input parameter. Uh, one of the categories was beverages, so let's go ahead and add that here. Um, you can also specify a specific type for this input parameter. You could say that it's a currency, a date, an integer, a number, a select, or a text. And now select um, just gives, uh, select gives you a designer drop-down list of values to choose from. Uh, we're gonna stick with text, so I'm gonna keep that selected. Now with all the uh, setup for this input parameter done, I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. All right, now how do we utilize that input parameter to filter out the data? So I'm going to go ahead and select our categories for each tag. This is where we'll be, where we'll be filtering out the, the, the data. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on this wizard button right here. 
and this will open up our SQL select wizard. I'm going to expand this a little. All right. Over here on the left side, you have, uh, uh, since we are working with the uh, SQL table, we have our tables and our views, just like you saw in the data bin. Now in this middle section right here, these are the columns that we're pulling back. We're retrieving the data for the category ID, category name, description, and picture. Now, what if I wanted to display the output in some sorted way? Um, instead of just having it go category ID, say we want something else. We want to sort our output by category name. Well, you can do that within this sort section right here. So go ahead and select the category name over here in the categories table. And I'm going to go ahead and drag my cursor over here and drop that right here. So here we're now sorting by that category name going A to Z. And when I pull that over, you may have noticed that this over here on the right side flashed. Now this is our data preview. And this will give you a preview of the data that we're working with from within this for each tag. And here we have a category ID, a category name, description, and picture. Now, if I was to change this and sort this Z to A just by clicking that, you'll see now that at our data preview, um, it has changed to now sort category name Z to A, seafood, produce, meat, all the way down to beverages. Okay, let's just turn this back to keep it A to Z. All right, and now beneath this sort section is our filter section or our SQL where clause. And this is used to filter out data. Um, we can use this to filter out data by using that input parameter that we just created. So to do that, I'll go ahead and click, click here to add a group. And we want a filter, so I'm going to click here to add a filter. Now we need to select what we want to filter by, so I'm going to click here to select the node. And we want to filter by category name, so I'm going to select category name just like that. Click OK. And now we want our category name to be equal to a value, but you could also click on this equal to and you can change it to a different thing. So instead of equals to, maybe you want it to just contain a specific value or start with a letter or something. Uh, but we want to keep this equal to. And now we want to provide the value that we want. So I'm going to click on that and we could type in a value right here. Or I'm going to use that drop down arrow. And here are all our input parameters. Um, that we've set up. We only have one because that's all we set up, but if you had more, you would see more listed. But we want to filter by category, our input parameter, so we're going to go in and select that. Okay, now when I select that, that, you may notice over here our data preview pane has changed. And that's because now we're filtering our output to only display category names that equal our input parameter. And if you remember, our input parameter had a default, which was beverages. So that's why we are now only seeing one record here, beverages, because that's all we've asked to display. All right, um, and when I added this where clause right here, this filter, you may notice down here that the where clause was added in this grayed out section. Now this section you can't upgrade, update through the SQL select wizard. Um, you can update this through the tag editor um, when you wanna update the select statement. And we'll show you update into the tag editor in the intermediate training. But for now, I just wanted to show you, we are now dynamically adding this where clause right here so that we are only going to display the category name right here for the value that's in our input parameter. And our variables, as you can see right here, they're displayed as a dollar sign, one of those squiggly brackets, 
the name, and then the end, ending squiggly bracket. So that's how we define uh, variables um, within our select statement. So this is another cool way that if say you don't know um, how to write queries, by using this wizard, you can actually um, define what you want to display, and then down here, you can see the query that makes that happen. So now that we have this set up for our filter, I'm going to click OK. And now what happens when we generate output? I'm going to click Output, say Yes to Save. And we'll now see a prompt for our variables. And here we have one variable category. So there was more that more will be listed. So let's, instead of displaying the beverage um, record, let's go ahead and change this to something different. Let's choose confections. Another thing on the list, I'm going to click OK. And here in our output, instead of displaying the full category table like we did earlier, we are now display, just, just displaying one record, and that is our confections record because that's what we chose for the input parameter. Our XML table is still unaffected. It still displays. We just have now only filtered one table um, and that using uh, dynamic input parameters. I just want to show you one more filtering and we'll be done with this webinar. So we have just uh, filtered dynamically. But what happens if we want to filter statically? What happens if no matter how many times we output, we want something specific to, di to display? So I'll show you that right here in this last table. So I'm going to select the employees for each tag. And similar to what we did here, I'm going to go up to the wizard and click on that. And now this is just a little different look because it's our XPath wizard. Um, and the nodes are not as formatted in XML as they are in SQL. Uh, but this still does the same thing. Say we wanted to put an order in for this last table. Well, we could do that by clicking here to add an order by. Say we want to order by first name. So I can select the node, click OK. And now you can even see down here we're dynamically adding to our uh, query right here. We are now adding our first name. Now we can go over here to the data preview pane. And here we're, we're ordering first name ascending. So here's Andrew. If I minimize this, we see Ann and Janet, so forth. If I want to change this to descending, I'll go ahead and click on ascending and choose descending. It updated our query down here, and now you can see that the records are sorting in descending first name order. So here we have Steven, uh, we have Robert, and so on. All right, now um, what happens if we want to add a filter, a static filter? So no matter, no matter how many times we output, we want to see uh, something specific. So this example, uh, we're going to show you no matter how many times we generate output, we only want this table, this XML table, to display those records for employees that are in the country, United Kingdom. So to do that, I'll come over here. Similar to the SQL one, I'll click here to add a group. And now I will click here to add a condition. And now I'm going to select the node of what I want to filter by. So I mentioned we want to filter by country. So I'm going to select country, click OK. Again, we want it equal to, but you could click on that equal to, and there are a few other options. We're going to keep it equal to. We'll click here to set the value. If we wanted dynamic, we could click that and choose our input parameter. But since we want some static filtering, uh, we want it just to always display those employees from the UK. I'm going to go ahead and enter UK just like that, press enter. Uh, query is now updated to indicate we only want those employees where the country is UK, exactly what we want. I'm going to click OK. Now, to, now I'm going to generate output just to make sure 
so we can see show you this static filtering. Uh, first thing though we get is a uh, prompt for input parameters for the category name table. We've done confections, let's change this to seafood. Press OK. All right, and now we are returning just those employees from the United Kingdom based on that static filter we set up in the XPath widget. And here is our category table, and it's only displayed in the one record seafood. All right, so that's how you can filter your data either statically or dynamically. Let's just go back to the slides. I want to make sure we covered all the topics. Okay, we talked about the SQL and XPath wizard. I show you how to I showed you how to sort and how to add dynamic and static filters. We went over the input parameters, um, showed you uh, the prompt that you get before you generate output. I showed you how to add a default value, how to reference that parameter in a tab, in a tag, and also what the prompt looks like. All right, uh, you may want to take a screenshot of this page while you're on it. Um, it's a, there's a lot of good information here, a lot of resources that you can utilize. So there's the winwordstudios.com resources user-support-center. And this is a central page for everything Winword support. So within that page, there are links to our knowledge resources, training videos, template libraries, and more. If you want to look up anything from our knowledge base, you can do that at ohana.winwoodstudios.com. We're always updating our knowledge base, so you may want to check that out and could possibly find the answer to a question that you have. Uh, if you can't find what you're looking for, you can always reach out to our amazing support team at support.winwoodstudios.com. Or you can also email them at support at winwoodstudios.com. So if you have a question that you can't find the answer to, go ahead and contact our support team. Um, if you want to retrieve your license key, you can do this at store.winwood.net. And if you want any changes or have any feature requests that you want added to your engines or designer, you can do this at ideas.winword.net. Okay, for our intermediate training webinar, we'll go over some advanced uses of the for each tag, where we'll set up columns-based tables instead of row-based tables. I'll go over how to show or hide specific things by using either the if-else tags or the switch case tags. We'll cover conditional formatting where we'll out, we will conditionally format our output to show uh, red text for specific conditions that I'm at. We'll go, out, go over adding the functions to the template and also importing sub-templates into your main template. We'll go over as well. All right, there's going to be a, a short survey at the end of this webinar. Please feel free to fill it out truthfully. Any feedback that you can provide will uh, not only help me, but also the attendees of the next webinar. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some questions and uh, provide you with some answers. I'm just gonna read it for a moment and then I'll mention what it was. Okay. Okay, the question uh, we got was, don't we need any settings on the end for each tag? And if there are multiple for each, how do we know which end for each is for which loop? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we will be covering that in our intermediate class, but let me give you a quick, um, let me show you that quickly. Will this be a good one? All right. Uh, let's see. All right. 
So, yes, there are settings on the end for each tag. Um, we'll go over some of those later um, in the intermediate. But when you are creating a table and you don't want the last row to be displayed, one of the settings within this is to delete that last row. Um, and settings for the end for each tag um, can be accessed by just double clicking that tag and going to properties. And here, uh, here's that one setting. Uh, and for each tags don't really do too much. There's no queries associated. So it doesn't have too much properties associated with it, but it can be used to delete a row. Uh, and the other part of that question, I uh, hope that answers it for you. There are some settings, we'll go over that, um, but there's not many for the end for each. And the other part of that question is, if there are multiple for each, how do we know which end for each is for which loop? Um, this is also something we'll go over next week, but uh, if you open up the if you open up the tag tree, which is right here in the Windward tab over here, here you'll see uh, tags that belong, uh, that are in this template. Um, it's Right now you see tags in the main story, and the main story is just this main part of the template. If I created headers or footers, you would see headers and footers, but since it's only just the main body, we have main story here. But if you expand that, we have our two tables. Here's our categories. And if I expand that, you can see all the values and the end for each. And then there's also our XML table, our employees, and our end for each. And if you didn't know what um, tag referred to which table, you can always go ahead and expand on this tag tree and say, okay, I want the employees. But I need to work on the employees and for each tag. So all you do is find it within this employees tag, click on it. I double clicked it and it brought me right to that tag. If I was to click on this picture to, uh, description tag, it brings me right to that. So this tag tree is a nice way to always find tags that are in your table. Hope that helped, hope that answered your question. Okay, and uh, I will answer your other question. Um, you're welcome. I will answer your other question. I'll create a ticket for you, um, and and reach out to you because I want to make I want to see get some screenshots of what you're experiencing. There was just some uh, error connecting to the SQL server. Uh, some um, so I'm gonna work with you off offline on that. Um, all right. Well. Uh, so expect an email or a ticket from me shortly. Well, I want to thank you all uh, for joining today. I hope you got some good good lesson out of this. Um, well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, goodbye now.